Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Goblin Rogue. Rogue has ventured into the cave under the disguise of a kobold. The rest of the party has just heard Milana's voice, confirming that she is down there. Lizard folk look at each other briefly before fighter shrugs. She's down there. We're not going to kill her by waiting up here. Sorcerer, didn't we say it would be stupid to go down there? Fighter, yeah, but Gobby went down there without us. We're not going to leave him to fight her alone. Party can't argue with that logic. Lighting their way with the light spell, the party ventures into the cave, looking for any sign of the vampire spawn. Meanwhile, Rogue is running with a few of the kobolds. A few keep splitting off from the group, running to set up an ambush. Rogue, regularly having to roll sleight of hand checks, keeps marking the walls with his dagger, signifying where he is going. Lizard folk see the markers, knowing which way to go. They fight through several of the ambushes, not finding much difficulty considering the warnings and kobolds general weakness. Their only issue is pinning their attackers down. The kobolds ambush, shoot a few crossbows and retreat back into the tunnels, splitting up so the party can't follow all of them. It's infuriating, and the party have to be on guard every time they turn a corner. They also constantly expect Milana to jump out, taking the opportunity to kill them in their weakened state. Rogue is struggling to keep up with the kobolds, while not letting them touch him. He has no idea where they're leading him, but also doesn't want to let them escape. Suddenly, kobolds reach a small room that seems empty. Then one kobold pushes aside a small stone in the corner, revealing a tiny tunnel. Getting on their bellies, the kobolds begin to crawl through the hole. Rogue takes a quick second to scratch a line in the wall before he gets on his stomach and begins crawling too. He gets about halfway when he hears a grinding behind him. The stone being put back in place. He comes out, finding himself at a small underground plateau, overlooking a ramshackle town of sorts. The player smiles, thinking he's just marked out the home of the kobolds to his friends. And then he hears a groan behind him. He turns, seeing a pair of kobolds swinging axes at a small wooden post. The post snaps, and with a crash, the tunnel collapses, closing that path off. Offok. Oh, JPG. Meanwhile, lizard folk are going through the tunnel, killing every cobble they can get their hands on. The cleric's wolf friend is having difficulty locating the kobolds, due to the abundance of their scent on every single wall, and the cleric is mostly doing his best to make sure it doesn't get hit. Finally though, party round a corner, finding a small group of kobolds lining up with crossbows in their hands. They're in the room with the collapsed tunnel, though like, the party doesn't know this. They quickly wipe out the kobolds, the sorcerer taking a moment to reflect on the scaly nature of their opponents. Cleric looks around, seeing the mark the rogue left on the wall. One perception check later, he notices the rock. He goes over and rolls it over, revealing the freshly collapsed tunnel. The small lizard folk went in here. Fighter walks over to a kobold and after looking at his head for a bit, cuts it off with his axe. Proceeds to use the top jaw as a makeshift shovel. It can only get a tiny bit at a time, but he's slowly making process. Cleric and sorcerer watch the entrance to the room, making sure no one can sneak up. Then they hear a laugh. The laugh echoes along the corridors, making it sound creepy f. Cleric holds the sword in his hand, holding a guiding bolt until he sees Milana. He peeks his head out the corridor. Without dark vision, he struggles to see. He looks one way. Can't see her. Looks the other way. Can't see her. Here's a small shift. Looks up, sees her grinning at him from the ceiling. She drops on him, barely avoiding the guiding bolt as she falls. He gets slammed to the ground and she sinks her teeth in. The sorcerer launches a magic missile at her and she grunts as it throws her off the cleric. The fighter scrambles out of the partially dug out hole, 
but isn't able to get close enough to her to do anything. Milana picks up the cleric and throws him in the room. It was fun, but I'm afraid I have to go. With that, she leans over and grabs one of the supports. Cleric realizes what she's doing a second after choosing to shoot a guiding bolt. The bolt misses and with a laugh of triumph, she pulls the support free from the wall. There's a huge rumble as part of the roof collapses. The sorcerer hits her with another magic missile, but she just laughs. You can hit that pretty reliably, but how fast can you run? With that, she begins sprinting down the corridor, kicking at support so she goes, further speeding up the collapse. Wolf leading the way, party run as fast as they can, trying to get out of the cave in time. Wolf crosses the threshold and begins yipping, almost like it's begging its bipedal friend to hurry up. They're not fast enough. Wolf jumps back as the cave collapses, the lizard folk a mere 50 feet away. Rogue hears the deep rumbling in the distance, even as the other kobolds stop to listen. Dust falls in massive sheets from the ceiling above, and several of the kobolds begin coughing. They move away, leaving the rogue to just stare at the caved-in hole with a what now sort of expression. He refreshes his disguised self and looks out at the town, where several of the kobolds are now moving off towards. He just sits there for a moment before one kobold walks up, saying something to him in draconic. He looks at it blankly and it frowns, saying the words again. Rogue taps his ears, or where a kobolds would be, imitating that he's been defend. Deception check. 16. The kobold seems to believe it, and walks over, patting him on the back. Rogue player freaks out, worrying that the kobold will notice the difference in texture, disguise self is purely illusionary. However, it doesn't seem to, and begins walking off. Close call. When the kobolds are gone, the rogue turns back to the cave-in and points at it, trying to use message. Nothing. He sighs and decides to walk into the town, figuring he can't do anything here. He wanders for a bit, seeing several kobolds embracing each other and comforting others. He realizes with a shed of guilt that they're mourning the friends his party likely killed. He wanders deeper into the town, ignoring looks from several kobolds. One shouts something at him and throws him something. He looks down, recognizing it as some piece of meat. They're feeding him. He waves a hand in gratitude and continues making his way through the town, munching on the meat every so often. Finally, he comes across another tunnel, larger, and leading away from the town. It has a piece of wood placed next to it, draconic inscribed on it. Of course, he can't read it. He's about to leave when he feels the faintest feeling on his skin. Wind? He begins walking through the tunnel, searching for the source. He passes a few kobolds, who give him a nod as they pass. He continues his way through, until he hears a weird rumbling up ahead. Concerned about another cave-in, he shields his head. But none comes. Instead, there's some shouting from in front of him, and he jumps out of the way as a kobold riding a basilisk charges past him. He averts his eyes as he recognizes what it is but then he feels the terrible feeling of cold breath on his back. He looks over slowly, keeping his eyes to the ground, and sees that the basilisk has stopped, its feet turned towards him. He realizes with terror that it can smell that he's not a kobold. He slowly begins to move away, but he hears the kobold riding it yell to him. He decides, fuck it, and begins sprinting. Not sus at all. The basilisk gives Jace, every footstep thudding behind him. To his surprise, he realizes he's faster than it, and he lets out a small laugh of relief as he begins to gain ground. That's when he sees a kobold riding a basilisk in front of him. He meets its eyes. Con save. 13. He shifts his gaze just before it begins to turn him to stone. Even so, he feels his body tighten a bit. He does, however, realize that it's blocking his path in front of him. The player looks at me. How high is the ceiling? The kobold on its back can sit comfortably without having to duck his head. Party nods his head. I'd like to cast floating disc right in front of the basilisk and use that as a boost so I can park her over the basilisk. The man is a madman. A brave madman, but a madman nonetheless. He summons the disc, which of course can't move once he's close enough. 
he jumps onto it, the basilisk charging towards him. Acrobatics check. 19. Planting one hand on its forehead and using his momentum and the extra height, he leaps over its head, surprising the kobold on top. His feet kick into the kobold, deceiting him and throwing both of them to the ground behind it. He gets to his feet and begins running, seeing light ahead of him. He makes it out into the light, finding himself in a patch of trees. The light is moonlight, but he doesn't care, laughing like a madman as he runs for the bloody hills. Meanwhile, in the caves, the cleric casts light. He coughs painfully as he tries to get a look around him. He has a tiny bit of headroom, but he can see that his leg is pinned by a huge rock. He hears a cough beside him, and sees the sorcerer stir to life. They look around, using their light to peer through their small pocket. They see the fighter, face down in the dirt, blood pooling from a wound in his head. Cleric casts healing word because he can't reach him, and the bleeding stops. The fighter is still knocked out cold though. Cleric and sorcerer look at each other, the light their only way of seeing. Through cracks in the rubble, they can hear the wolf howling, a pained, mournful sound. Game ends. Be me, lizard DM. Be not me, lizard folk fighter, lizard folk cleric, lizard folk sorcerer, goblin rogue. Lizard folk trapped underground, rogue somewhere in the nearby area. Lizard folk can still hear the wolf howling at the collapsed tunnel. Cleric is using light to give the party some visibility. Or rather, the sorcerer. The fighter is unconscious. Sorcerer, if we can hear the wolf under all of this rock, it means there's probably air. Doesn't help us. Sorcerer nods. Asks me if there's any light coming in. I tell him there might be, but there's way too much dust to see. He casts gust, and both begin coughing as the dust in their pockets whirls around. Some of the dust finds its way out through cracks, but all Sorcerer did is essentially fill their mouths and noses with dust. When dust settles, Sorcerer pauses for a moment. Do you think, Rogue, got out? Cleric thinks for a moment. I'd like to cast Sending. Cleric casts Sending. Comma Rogue, if make out, we trapped in cave. Milana collapse tunnel. Fighter, hurt. Wolf outside entrance. There's a long pause. Comma cleric. You're alive? I made it out, but I heard the crash. I don't know where I am, but I'll try find my way too. Message cuts off. Cleric looks at sorcerer. He's alive, he's on his way, but he has no idea where he is. Sorcerer thinks for a moment. If he digs, he might collapse the tunnel more. Cleric gives Sorcerer a well shit face. Rogue, after hearing the message, begins focusing more on his surroundings. He realizes he's near some hills, but as he tries to listen, he can't hear the wolf. Hints that he's very far away. HRM. JPG. After almost two minutes of viral thinking, the rogue finally lifts his head. Orc camp was south of the cave, right? I tell him yes. He asks me where the moon is in the sky. I tell him it's still rising. So that means east. He orients himself and frowns when he realizes that he's facing a different direction to where he left the cobbled village. He has no clue where the entrance is. Decides to begin walking south. He walks for about an hour when he hears a rumbling nearby. He retreats into a small thicket of bushes, parting a few leaves to let his eyes look through. He sees a caravan of carriages lit by torches, heading south. He raises an eyebrow as I describe how, even from this distance, he can see that the occupants wearing pretty heavy armor. A warband of sorts. He thinks for a moment before raising his hand, pointing at a guy on the lead caravan. He casts message. Hey, don't shoot okay. I'm a gnome looking for a town around here. Look around, but please don't shoot when I show up. He sees a person slow his carriage, speaking to a person beside him. The whole caravan comes to a stop. He goes to step out, saying he'll cast Disguise Self. He then realizes he doesn't have any more LVL1 spell slots. Oh shit. He points at the guy again. Change of plans. I'll admit, I'm actually a goblin, but don't let that sway you from, you know, not shooting me. With a deep breath, 
He steps out of the bush, preparing himself to become a pincushion. To his relief, despite someone pointing him out, no one shoots. He gets about 30 feet away when a voice yells out for him to stop. You got any friends with you, goblin? The speaker is a half-elf. Rogue gives his most charming smile. It's not great. Well, actually, that's exactly where I'm going. I'm looking for friends. You wouldn't mind helping me, would you? Half-elf raises an eyebrow. You're looking for other goblins? You get separated or something? Rogue gives small laugh. Not exactly. You see, I'm looking for some lizard folk. They're really nice guys, currently trapped in a cave, probably about to die of suffocation. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate some help from some kind, strong, muscular, well-armored do-gooders in finding them. Flattery is so intense I swear the table becomes slick with butter. Half-elf pauses. Why are they trapped in a cave and you're not? Rogue shrugs. Because I was hanging out with some kobolds. My friends couldn't fit in the tunnel and a vampire bitch took out the cave. Man holds up an armored hand. Vampire? Rogue pauses. UHH, yeah. Pale, black hair, murderous bitch who's killed two of the lizard folk. Even killed me. I know right. Who would have guessed? Man snaps his fingers, shutting the rogue up. Where'd you last see her? A human village, a bit away from an orc camp. They have a cave nearby. Technically, I didn't actually see her, but I know she was definitely in the area. Half-elf thinks for a moment. I know the place. You've fought her before? Rogue nods. I skewed her friend in the back and sliced her up before she killed me. But she won't do it twice. I can tell you that much. Half-elf seems to doubt him but nonetheless looks back at the caravan. Cure it. The goblin will ride with you. We'll take him to his friends. Rogue smiles, bowing his head in a somewhat formal manner. He looks up trying to figure out which person is curate. He raises an eyebrow when he sees a lizard folk in the same armor, seated on the third carriage. Another one? Just how many lizard folk are they sending out of those bloody swamps anyway? He climbs aboard, shuffling to sit beside curate. The half-elf whistles and the caravan begins to move off, heading southwest. Rogue gets uncomfortable, since curate stares at him for long periods of time. Is there something on my face? He finally asks. Curate shakes his head. No. I'm just intrigued. I've never seen a goblin up close before. Rogue starts. You can speak common properly? Curate shrugs. Why wouldn't I be able to? Rogue pauses. If I find out those mother efkers have been messing with me this entire time I'm going to lose it. After a good hour, the rogue's ears twitch. He hears the faintest sound of a wolf howling. People on the caravan are noticing it too. Rogue stands up, not aiding much to his height, and yells at the half-elf. Oil. Lizards had a wolf. That might be them. Half-elf nods, and the caravan begins heading in the direction of the howling. The sound cuts off as they get closer, but the rogue can distinctly see several hills now. He jumps off the carriage when he gets close enough, looking for the wolf. He sees footprints leading away and guesses that it ran off when it heard the carriages. He finds the cave entrance and cups his hands over his mouth. Oil. Lizard folk. You in there. He pauses for a moment. Then, as loud as the player can, he shouts koo e Whole table covers our ears at the volume. It is an almost perfect koo -ee. Pretty sure I'm going to get noise complaints for that one. The lizard folk most definitely hear it. Cleric uses his last LVL3 spell slot to cast sending. We down here. Be careful. Sorcerer. Worry cave collapse more. Rogue grins. I found a few people who might be able to help. One of them is a lizard folk who speaks properly. You'd better not have been. Message cuts off. He runs off, going back to the carriages, where a few people are beginning to dismount. The half-elf walks over, looking at the rubble. Your friends are in there? Rogue nods. Half-elf organizes his people, and several go and collect picks, while others proceed to lift the rocks away. 
Rogue sits back, watching the process. He hears a rustle and he turns, seeing eyes staring out at him from a bush in the nearby woods. He raises his crossbow and the eyes disappear. Cleric player gives him a glare. Shoot my wolf and you'll wish you were never born. Rogue shrugs. I won't shoot the wolf, but I'm not taking chances. Milana isn't killing me again. After several hours, one of the helpers move a rock, revealing a hole. They hear a series of coughs as the lizard folk finally get some fresh air. Rogue runs over, eyes streaming from the dust. He peers into the hole, seeing only the hand of the cleric at the bottom, maybe three feet down. Hey, cleric, you all right down there? Get out hole. Is not nice here. If you can speak normal common and you've been pulling my leg this entire time, I swear to god. No understand, but can wait. Fighter. Hurt. Need rescue. Rogue nods and steps out of the way so the people can go about clearing the hole. Finally, just as the grey of twilight begins seeping into the world, the lizard folk finally climb out of the cave, covered in dust, bruises and blood. Cleric looks around immediately. Where friend? You look like shit and the first thing you ask is where is your wolf? You need some priorities. Cleric ignores him, moving over to see where the fighter is being treated by the armored people. Rogue walks up to the half-elf. Just who are you all, anyway? Half-elf shrugs. We're the Knights of Purgation. We wander ice up in, destroying every evil in our path. Rogue raises an eyebrow. What constitutes as evil in your eyes? Half-elf points in the direction of the village. Whatever sick thing does that. Rogue nods. You've got that right. Half-elf looks at him and pauses for a moment. You're still going after her? From what I've heard, she's quite the difficult one. Rogue shrugs and points to his chest. What did dying ever do to stop vengeance? She's killed three of us and butchered in knowable numbers more. If we don't stop her, who will? Say you do get her? What then? Rogue pauses, and his eyes become extremely cold. Then it's high water's turn. The half-elf freezes. Take my advice. Don't. High water is more dangerous than you can imagine. Rogue looks him in the eye with an intense glare. I know just how dangerous high water is. Believe me. If I have to die a thousand times over, I will kill that monster. Half-elf nods. Then let me do my part. He whistles and waves his hand. Curate comes running over. Accept Curate as help. He's trained just as well as any of my men and he's already expressed interest in your group to me. Rogue looks him up and down. You sure it's not just because he's a lizard? Not sure if you've seen, but we have a fair number of those already, and at this point, I think it's just racially profiling to give us more. The half-elf laughs. Curate leans forward, extending his hand towards the rogue. I want to accompany you. I've never seen a lizard folk other than myself, and if they are as underdeveloped as you claim, I believe my presence can only help them. Rogue looks at him for a moment. You know we'll be fighting dangerous people right? I died not three days ago. Curate stares at him, pretty clearly intent on coming. Rogue sighs and takes his hand. Half elf nods. So. You know our name. What do you call yourselves? So I can recognize you should we meet again. Rogue pauses for a moment before looking back at the group. Rising Sun. We're called Rising Sun. Half Elf nods. He pats Curate on the back before walking off, returning to his carriage. Rogue walks Curate over to the rest of the party, where the fighter is currently eating a piece of meat, having just woken up again. Everyone, this is Curate. He's going to be joining us for a while. He wants to fight vampires for whatever reason. Curate extends his hand. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'd love to spend this time learning of your culture and teaching you the ways of the world. Lizard folk stare blankly at him. No one shakes his hand. Fighter gets to his feet, standing almost the same height as Curate. He gets close, obviously making Curate uncomfortable. He growls deep in his throat, his tail thrashing behind him. Curate looks at the rogue for help, but he doesn't know what to do either. Suddenly, the fighter lunges forward, snapping his jaws closed directly in front of Curate's face. 
Kirit jumps back, falling to the ground in his shock. The fighter shakes his head and turns to the rogue. He know lizard folk. He have scale, but he a fleshy. With that, the fighter walks off, the other lizard folk pausing briefly before following him. The sun begins rising over the horizon, bathing Isopin in the light of a new day. Game ends. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Paladin, Goblin Rogue. Party. Now with the addition of Cure at the Paladin, leave the site of the cave that trapped them. As party walk away, Cleric keeps asking me if he sees the wolf anywhere. It's like a child saying, are we there yet? After my repeated recital of no and giving explanations that basically circle around to wolf is not here, stop asking, Cleric begins glaring at Rogue. The party move through the day, all but ignoring Paladin's existence. Fighter even goes so far as to begin speaking in Draconic, which he learns that the Paladin can't speak. As party rest for the night, setting up a watch, Rogue sits down next to Paladin. Don't worry, they'll warm up to you. Just give it time. How long did it take them to accept you? I don't really know. They saved my life and, Cleric, says I'm one of them, but I don't know when that became a thing. I mean, they tied me to a chair when I first met them. Paladin gives Rogue a weird look but doesn't respond. Rogue looks at him for a bit before speaking up again. So, why are you so interested in them? You don't speak like them, you certainly don't act like them. What's your story? Paladin shrugs. I'm interested because they are so different. They came from the swamps. If I've ever been there, I don't remember it. All I've known is society. Rogue raises an eyebrow. You've never even seen the swamps? Paladin shakes his head. What, so did your knight friends raise you or something? Paladin pauses briefly. Comma they taught me. Rogue looks at me like he's going to roll in sight, but seems to decide against it. So you want to teach them, is that it? Want to make them like you? Paladin shrugs. From what I've heard, they're uncivilized, violent and ruthless. I want to see if I can teach them to accept the finer side of society. Rogue grimaces. Good luck with that. They lost their friend a few days ago. He knew more about us fleshies than the rest of them combined. But even he wasn't like you. Honestly, I don't think they want to be civilized. Paladin looks at the sleeping lizard folk and sighs. I can only try. Next day, party continue heading in the direction of Nox Vakeep. They haven't seen any sign of Milana since she trapped them in the cave, and they've mostly seemed to have lost the courage to hunt her down. They're walking through a mostly flat area when they see a small huddle of rocks. Even from this distance, it looks unnatural. The rocks are stacked too perfectly, creating too much of a wall. Fighter rolls perception. 17. He can hear the faintest sound of rustling behind the rocks, and what sounds like whispering. He relays the information to the party. Party decide to creep silently forward, drawing their weapons. Rogue tells the paladin what's going on before dashing ahead of the others, moving in the tall grass almost invisibly. As he gets closer to the rocks, he hears the whispers more clearly. He rolls perception. 18. He identifies the language, and player raises an eyebrow as I describe that the people are speaking goblin. Can I hear what they are saying? He strains his ears and hears the tail end of a conversation. How close do you think they are? Close enough. Call it. Rogue moves to step past the rocks, holding his crossbow ready when he hears the piercing sound of a whistle from the other side. He jumps around the other side and lifts the crossbow. 
Hands up mother f cause or I'll blow out your brains. The pack of five goblins hiding there, jump in shock. One of the goblins tilts his head and looks the rogue up and down. Turks? Rogue player freezes as I describe the goblin in detail. Taller than the rogue, well built, black hair spiked on his head, large scar covering half his face. The goblin slowly gets to his feet, holding his hands up. Turks is that you? Other goblins begin whispering to each other, all relaying the name, Turks. The goblin with the scar steps forward. Let's just put down the crossbow, Turks. Nobody needs to get hurt. Rogue about to open his mouth to speak when he hears an ear piercing screech from the sky. He turns, seeing a winged form in the light of the sun. The lizard folk look up, just in time for the creature to swoop down. Sorcerer cries out as claws lacerate his chest, and the creature crashes to the ground next to him. Rogue suddenly sees movement next to him, but by the time he turns around, the goblin is on top of him, trying to pull the crossbow out of his hands. Roll initiative. Fighter throws a javelin, hitting the wyvern in the leg. It manages to dodge the second javelin. Cleric runs up, swinging the sword. The wyvern deflects the blows with its claws and the cleric barely dodges out of the way out of a bite. He suddenly gasps as its stinger whips around, stabbing into him. Cleric goes stiff as poison flows into him, and party watch as he falls to the ground, spasming. Sorcerer releases a bolt of lightning, and the wyvern screeches, turning to him. Before it can do anything, the paladin runs in, swinging a massive greet axe. The wyvern takes one hit across its side and when it turns to look at him, he hits it with a thundering smite across the face. Rogue takes one hand off his crossbow and punches the goblin in the nose, getting some satisfaction as it breaks. He tries to kick it, but the goblin shoves whilst he's on one foot and both of them hit the ground. The goblin ends up on top and with a final effort, rips the crossbow away, tossing it to the side as he uses his other hand to slug the rogue across the jaw. As the fighter raises his battle axe to hit again, he's hit in the shoulder by an arrow. The other four goblins come out from behind their wall, raising short bows to fire on the group. The sorcerer takes an arrow to the leg and the paladin gets scratched across the face. The fighter jumps forward, raising his battle axe, and slashes it across the wyvern's leg. It screeches and flaps its wings, taking to the air. It circles into the sky and comes thundering down, the sun at its back. The paladin is blinded when he tries to look at it, and is helpless as it strikes him with its claws. The sorcerer launches a second level magic missile, tearing a hole through one of its wings. It slowly careens to the ground, hot blood steaming as it hits the dirt. The paladin sprints over to the cleric, using his lay on hands to get him up. Rogue draws a dagger and stabs at the goblin on top of him. The goblin jumps up to avoid the dagger, and the rogue follows, slashing him across the arm. The goblin draws a scimitar and slowly circles the rogue. Come on Turks, you know how this goes. I always win. I've learnt a few tricks. Oh. Let's see them then. With that, the goblin lunges forward, swinging his scimitar. Rogue tries to block desperately with the dagger, but gets cut across the arm and then the face. The goblins continue to fire onto the party, hitting them with the occasional arrow. Fighter dashes forward, using his action surge to swing twice with his battle axe. The wyvern screams out as he cuts it across its chest and hind legs. The cleric launches a guiding bolt hitting the wyvern across the face. It growls and snaps forward, closing its teeth around the fighter's shoulder. It lets go, but before he can set up a defense, the tail comes around, stabbing into him. He stiffens and drops to the ground, letting go of his axe. The sorcerer runs around and launches a lightning bolt hitting the wyvern and then two of the goblins behind it. The goblins are fried instantly, the wyvern screams in fury. The paladin sprints forward and leaps into the air, bringing his greet axe down. Nat 20. He slams the greet axe into the wyvern's skull, just as radiant energy begins to glow from the weapon. The wyvern's skull collapses in on itself and it collapses to the ground, dead. Nat 20 alone would have killed it, the additional smite made sure its ancestors won't recognize it in the next plane of existence. The rogue throws his dagger, embedding it into the goblin's leg. As the goblin yells out, 
he draws the short sword, running forward to swing at him. The goblin raises his scimitar, barely deflecting the strike. He yanks the dagger out of his leg, slashing it across the rogue's chest. He follows it up by swinging his scimitar, cutting open the rogue's leg. The remaining goblins fire at the sorcerer, both hitting him, one with a crit. The sorcerer falls to his knees, arrows embedded in his chest. The cleric runs over to the fighter, healing him with cure wounds. The sorcerer raises his hand and casts magic missile. It kills both of the remaining goblins. Paladin dashes over to the wall, where he sees the two goblins fighting. The rogue reaches down and grabs a handful of dirt, throwing it into the goblin's eyes. When the goblin reels back, he lifts his hand, shooting a fire bolt into his chest. The goblin pats out the fire and glares at the rogue. He runs forward, swinging his scimitar. The rogue goes to block it, but isn't fast enough, taking a cut across his chest. The goblin suddenly runs forward, tackling the rogue to the floor. The fighter stumbles over, and sees the fight going on. He raises his battle axe but the paladin holds up a hand. Let them fight alone. Have you no honor? The fighter growls at him, getting in his face. Honor no smart. Fleshy die and swamp. Paladin narrows his eyes but says nothing. Meanwhile, Rogue scrambles out from under the goblin, swinging the short sword to cut open his face. The goblin growls and kicks the rogue in the chest, sending him to the dirt. You're useless. You were always useless. Rogue spits out a bit of blood. At least I don't abandon my people. Goblin yells and rushes him. Rogue holds his sword in front of him, but the goblin just kicks it out of the way, using the same foot to stomp on the rogue's face. The rogue's nose breaks. Fighter walks over, lifting his battle axe. The goblin sees it coming and leaps out of the way at the last second. You say I abandoned my people? You don't even walk among our kind. Rogue gets to his feet. Comma fighter, leave him. This bastard is mine. Goblin grins, blood covering his teeth. So they're your friends now? You're a traitor to your own race. Rogue runs at him, swinging the sword wildly. The goblin easily dodges, blocking the hit and cutting open the other side of the rogue's face. Rogue blocks his second swing and launches a fire bolt. The goblin dodges out of the way and grabs the rogue's fingers. He wrenches the fingers sideways, breaking several. The rogue yells out, swinging his sword. The goblin deflects one strike, but not the second, cutting open his midsection. Goblin grabs the arm with the sword and begins bending it back. The rogue drops his sword and kicks out the goblin's legs, taking them both to the ground again. Goblin gets behind him and gets a choke on. Rogue elbows him in the stomach and when the goblin lets go, he climbs on top, sinking his teeth into the goblin's neck. The goblin screams, hitting the rogue in the face. Rogue retaliates with a nice uppercut, knocking the goblin out cold. Rogue. With 3 HP left, lets out a sigh and sits down. Fighter walks over. Can eat him? Rogue looks at the unconscious body for a moment like he's considering it. No. Not yet anyway. Fighter nods. Party tie up the goblin. Paladin walks over while Cleric is healing the rogue. So who is he? You two obviously know each other. Rogue looks at him. Sees rest of party looking over. He sighs and points to the goblin. That mother f -ker over there is Kogjin. He was a member of the guard for my home village. I never thought I'd see him again. Paladin, why do you hate him? Rogue pauses for a long time, then, very quietly, he says. Because he watched Highwater attack our village, and he chose to run rather than stay and fight. Table goes silent. Party sit in relative silence until Kerg wakes up. Eyes and steady and blood covering his face. He looks around, seeing the lizard folk, all armed, guarding him. His eyes fall onto the rogue and he spits blood out of his mouth. You fight dirty, speaking in goblin. At least I fight. Kirk's eyes narrow. We couldn't stop high water. You saw what he did. Rogue walks up and kneels in front of him. You didn't even try to fight him. You took one look and ran like the coward you are. I survived. And you let everyone else die for you. You let Corley die for you. Kirk shakes his head. Not everyone. 
Rogue goes stiff. You're lying. I watched Web and Burn. I had to put a stake through my own wife's chest to make sure she didn't come back. You have no idea the things I've seen. The things I've done. Kirk raises his chin. You must hate me for what I did. But I stand by my decision. The rogue bunches up his fist. If there are survivors. Where are they? It a cap point. Rogue pauses. If you're lying to me, I will kill you slowly. Why would I lie? I want our people to live just as much as you. Rogue turns away. Put him to sleep. Sorcerer casts sleep, knocking Kirk out immediately. Rogue pulls out the map, looking for a Turkap point. It's northeast, near the coast. It would take them away from Noxva Keep. Rogue looks up from the map and the paladin takes it. Rogue simply says a Turkap point, and paladin searches for it. You want to go there? Why? Rogue pauses. To see my family. He takes the map back and closes it. Sorcerer looks at him. You go home? Rogue shakes his head. My home is gone. If my people are in a Dirk app point. Paladin puts a hand on his shoulder. You should go. If you don't, and you die, you'll never get to see them again. But what about these guys? They've saved my life, accepted me, and offered to help me without asking for anything in return. They're trying to save their home. Paladin shrugs. Then meet us there. Meet us at Noxva Keep. You can see your people again and then join us to take down high water. Finally, the rogue shakes his head. I'll come with you. But once high water is dead, I'm going to a Dirk app point. Rogue looks over at Kirk. Cleric walks over, summoning the sword. We kill him? Rogue pauses. No. If Milana gets him, so be it. But the last thing he deserves is a quick death leave him. Party leave, continuing their journey to Noxva Keep. Game ends. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Fighter, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Paladin, Goblin Rogue. Party leave Kug behind, tied next to his makeshift wall. Party spend the day traveling further west. Rogue opens his map and after looking for a while, he points to a small point. More ruins. It might be beneficial to look inside. Paladin looks at me. Would I recognize that? Rolls intelligence check. 5. He's seen it on maps but has never bothered to ask about it. Party decide to spend the next few days making their way over there. After 4 days of walking, and no sign of Milona, they arrive. When looking at it from a distance, the first thing the party notices is the sparseness of buildings. Only a single dome sprouts from the ground, and parts of it have collapsed. Rogue looks at it and turns to the cleric. Your dog anywhere nearby? Cleric shakes his head. Wolf no return. Rogue sighs. Would be nice to have his nose right now. Paladin leans over. Why is that? He could smell the death coming from the last ruins we ventured into. Paladin pauses. He then begins walking closer to the ruins. Party follow close on his heels. Paladin stops outside the dome and raises his hands, closing his eyes. After a moment he shakes his head. There are no undead or fiends in the vicinity. Rogue looks at him and raises an eyebrow. Where have you been all my life? Paladin shrugs. Cleric walks up to the dome and climbs a piece of it, looking inside a broken part of the wall. It's extremely dark down there. He grabs a copper coin and casts light on it, dropping it into the hole. The light falls, illuminating a staircase before hitting water, causing the echoing sound of a splash to reach his ears. He turns to the party. Ruins underwater. Rogue looks down the hole and sighs. Oh damn it. Just as he goes to look away, he feels a weird vibrating on his hip. He looks down, seeing a green glow emanating from the sheath on his hip. He draws the short sword, frowning as he sees the symbols on its blade glow with a green light. He dips the sword into the hole and raises an eyebrow as the light increases in intensity. That's new. Paladin looks over, seeing the glow. He walks over, looking at the blade. Rolls a religion check. 15. This is a weapon blessed by the sea. Rogue looks at Paladin and shrugs. Meaning? 
Paladin shrugs back at him. Before we go in, spend some time with it. Try to learn what it does. Rogue shrugs. Decides to spend an hour with the sword. He never tried to attune to it after all of this time. I finally pass him a note I'd been holding onto for 4 sessions. Rogue looks at me and just sighs. For fcks sake. I've been holding onto this for 4 sessions and didn't once bother to attune to it. The sword deals an extra 1d6 thunder damage and 1d6 cold damage on a hit. It also grants the wielder the ability to hold their breath for 10 minutes. Rogue looks at the sword and nods. Well. That just made things a lot easier. As the sun begins to fall in the sky, the party descend into the ruins. Rogue can't help but squeal as the cold water goes up to his chest. Rest of party are up to their waists in water. Cleric, sorcerer and paladin all cast light on things they're holding or wearing. Rogue turns to the fighter. UHH, this might be a bad time to mention this. But I don't know how to swim. Party stare at him. Sorcerer, you know no swim? Rogue glares at him. Well, and like you, I didn't grow up in a swamp. Rogue sighs. Can I, can I ride on one of your backs? Whole party stare at him. Don't make this more humiliating than it already is. Just carry me. Fighter kneels down and the rogue climbs onto his back. Paladin unbuckles his armor and with some help from the cleric, doffs it. He stows it at the top of the stairs. Party slide into the water and begin traversing the cold water. The fighter, slowed by his passenger, falls slightly behind. The party descend down the stairs, going incredibly deep before it levels off. In the darkness ahead of them, the ruins stretch into a long corridor. They begin swimming, lighting their way with the three light spells. They get about 150 feet when they come across a room. The party turn into it, seeing several skeletons gathered around a statue. Party take one look and decide to move to the next room. Just before they do, the paladin takes a brief look at it, using another religion check. 2. He can't identify what it's depicting. Party keeps swimming. They turn down a few corridors, collecting a few coins and trinkets along the way before the rogue taps the fighter on the shoulder. His lungs are beginning to burn. Rogue uses message to tell the rest of the party that he's running out of breath. Their immediate goal becomes finding a source of air for the rogue. Sorcerer swims back to the fighter and casts haste on him, allowing him to swim at normal speed. They swim into another room, just as the rogue's vision begins to go black. There's no roof in this room and it spirals up into an upwards passage. Party swim up, the rogue weakly flapping his hand on the fighter's shoulder. Their heads break the surface of the water just as the rogue's hand goes limp. The rogue collapses to a stone floor, spewing up water. He was barely a second away from drowning. He sucks in a breath as the rest of the party climb onto the next level. They find themselves in a room large, dark room, barely lit by their spells. Rogue finally recovers and takes a look around. As he does so, he begins scanning the room, using his sword as a faint torch. He moves around, pausing only when he sees a skeleton. The skeletal hands are closed around its throat, and as he looks closer, he sees what looks like tooth marks in the bones. Rogue is creeped out. Perhaps against their better judgment, they decide to re-enter the water. Party continue to navigate this underwater labyrinth. As they get deeper, they begin to notice more skeletons, several in varying stages of being torn apart. Whatever killed them did so incredibly violently. Cleric looks at the others and jabs a finger upwards, indicating for them to find a place to rise. They do so, finding more bodies. Sorcerer, many body. Not good sign. Rogue gives him a ya think. Sort of look. Cleric suddenly has a thought and he walks over to a body. I'd like to cast speak with dead. The body doesn't move for a moment before snapping upright. Rogue lets out a little whimper, player specifically mentioned he did so. Cleric thinks for a moment. Do you speak draconic? Body opens its mouth and a harsh, grating voice echoes out. No. A piece of bone around the jaw falls to the ground with a clack. How'd I? I was stabbed. Fighter goes up to the body and curiously pokes it. It doesn't so much as notice him. 
cleric, unfazed by the goings on, continues to ask his questions. Why come here? I came for riches. Cleric thinks for a moment. What down here? The jaw of the corpse shifts to a weird angle as it opens its mouth to reply. Monsters of the sea. Rogue looks at everyone else. Okay, I want to go now. As they go to re-enter the water, the fighter sees the briefest movement in the water, gone before he can get a good look at it. Fighter passes the rogue to the cleric and they slide into the water, swimming further into the labyrinth of tunnels. As they are swimming, the rogue rolls a perception check. 13. He's looking around, not doing much besides holding onto the cleric's back when he sees a movement beside him. He turns in time to see something swimming rapidly towards him, teeth bared. He frantically taps the cleric on the shoulder but is too slow to stop a spear from jamming into his shoulder. He slides off the cleric's back, blood trickling into the water. He pulls out his crossbow to shoot when he hears a guttural cry from further down the tunnel. He turns, seeing several of the monsters swimming towards them, spears in hand. Sahujin. Roll initiative. The cleric launches a guiding bolt at the oncoming wave of enemies, striking one and sending it reeling back. The sorcerer casts lightning bolt, and the whole party watch as a brilliant stream of lightning illuminates the tunnel, frying several of the Sahuajin. Then the wave hits them. Spears flashing and water churning, the party is bombarded from every side by what seems like a never-ending stream of attacks. Nobody is left unharmed. The paladin swings his great axe unhindered due to his swim speed and slices it across one of the Sahuajin's chests before bringing it down on their head. The fighter swims towards the rogue, who is panicking with his sense of helplessness and begins clearing out some of the enemies near him. The rogue, barely able to keep himself stable, tries desperately to hit enemies with his crossbow, only managing to anger the enemies. The cleric casts mass healing word before swimming over to a Sahuajin that got too close and tearing out its throat with his jaws. The sorcerer casts magic missile at third level, watching as the streams of light blast into several of the enemies around him. Despite their losses, the attack train steams ahead, and the party once again faces a wave of attacks, now with advantage. They're impaled from every side and the fighter is bitten on the shoulder in his attempt to block a hit for the rogue. The paladin swings his axe, adding a thunderous smite to it. The hit lands and the entire corridor shakes as the sound of the impact echoes and amplifies. The fighter action surges, swimming in a frenzy and attacking everyone in sight. He accounts for four deaths in that single turn. The rogue, desperate, lifts his sword, stabbing into one of the Sahuajin nearby. The wound begins to freeze over and a loud boom reverberates from the walls. The cleric summons his magic sword, and begins swinging at enemies, cleaving one in half and badly injuring a second. Sorcerer thinks for a long time, before looking at me. I'd like to pull out the bag of arcane sticks, and I want to break one. MFW. PFW. Dipping his hand into the bag and pulling out a stick at random. The sorcerer doesn't so much as look at it before snapping it. His eyes suddenly become icy blue, and the water around him suddenly plummets in temperature. He raises his hand instinctively, and with a blast, a cone of cold races towards the enemy, freezing several on the spot. The light fades from his eyes and the stick turns to dust in his hand. Seeing this, the remaining Sahuajin retreat, swimming further into the halls. Just as they think they're safe though, the party hear a deep chuckling. Swimming out from the water is a large, four-armed Sahuajin, wielding a wicked trident and easily standing several heads taller than the party. It has been a long time since we've had a challenge. You are worthy opponents. He charges forward, impaling the paladin with the trident and forcing him deeper into the water, before closing the distance and closing his jaws around the paladin's neck. The paladin, not bothering to heal, swings his great axe twice, however, the Sahuajin dodges both times. The fighter, abandoning the rogue for the moment, swims to close the distance and swings his battle axe, slamming it into the back of the monster. The Sahuajin growls and glares at him. The rogue pulls out his crossbow and launches his bolts, one of which embeds itself in the Sahuajin's eye. With a deafening roar, it turns to him taking a moment to yank the bolt out of his eye. The cleric swims down,
casting cure wounds on the paladin before taking his sword and slashing it across the Sahuajin's chest. The sorcerer goes to cast magic missile when he feels his limbs stiffen up. He lowers his hand, too drained to use magic at the moment. The Sahuajin stabs the cleric in the shoulder with a trident before bringing it around and jamming it into the fighter's chest. The fighter's eyes widen, and he exhales, beginning to slowly drift to the bottom of the tunnel, unconscious. The monster suddenly swims up, ignoring hits from the paladin and cleric before reaching the rogue, whose eyes go wide with fear as it gets closer. It grabs him, and with a frenzy, bites into him. Nat 20. The bite closes around the rogue's throat, and without a moment of hesitation, the Sahuajin tears out a piece of his neck. The rogue, bleeding profusely, exhales, and begins to sink too. The paladin swims down to the fighter, using his lay on hands to heal him. The fighter, still sinking, rights himself, before looking around. He dashes towards the rogue picking him up along the way and desperately trying to make his way to air before he loses his remaining breath. The cleric blasts the grinning shark man with a guiding bolt, tearing a wound in his chest. The sorcerer raises his hand, but is still unable to do anything. The Sahurajin, seeing his weakness swims towards him, stabbing into him with the trident twice before biting into him. The sorcerer, already weak from so many hits, slowly begins to sink, unconscious. The paladin closes the distance and lifts his great axe. He swings, but the trident flashes around, catching the head in one of its forks. He pulls it out and swings again. Nat 20. He brings the axe into the monster's chest, hitting him with a second level smite. The Sahulajin, in his final moments, laughs. A worthy opponent. With that, his eyes roll back into his head, and he drifts towards the bottom of the tunnel. The fighter dashes trying to reach a room he knows has a second level when his vision starts to go black from lack of oxygen. The rogue rolls his second death save, the first of which he succeeded. Nat 1. Blood pulses from the wound as his heart begins to slow. The cleric casts cure wounds on the sorcerer and begins swimming after the fighter. The sorcerer, now awake and also almost out of breath, dashes after him, swimming towards the surface. The paladin dashes away from the body of the Sahuajin and begins following. It becomes a race against time. And then, just before the fighter breaches the surface, he falls unconscious. Both he and the rogue begin to drift down. Death save for the rogue. Whole party on the edge of their seats as he rolls. 10. A unanimous sigh of relief. The cleric closes the distance casting healing word to get the rogue up before grabbing the fighter and beginning his ascent. The sorcerer swims closer and grabs the fighter's other arm, and with their combined strength, the cleric and sorcerer get him above the surface and place him on the floor. The paladin scoops up the rogue and they both break the surface too. The rogue vomits out a stream of water, even as the fighter lays motionless. The cleric casts second level cure wounds on him. Now there are two streams of water being vomited. Party decide they've had enough of these ruins and promptly leave, making camp just outside it. Night has fallen, and as the cleric looks around, he hears the distant sound of a howl. The party drift off to sleep. Game ends. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.